Ashley, what's up? Hey, not much. What's up? You gotta, you gotta, you're gonna have to talk more into that guy. You All can right, gotcha. Kind of cock it if you like. Uh, yeah, that. Gotcha. Yeah. All right, there, you go. there I am. There you are. <laughs> now you got it. They're kind of uh, like at first it takes a little getting used to yeah. the distance. Yeah. It seems like you can. <laughs> Usually, I'm loud enough on my own. I don't have to worry about it. So. <laughs> so how's it going? Good, good. Just busy. Yeah. Staying busy, yeah. That's good. Busy's always good. Yeah. Especially yeah. as opposed to not. Yes, I get bored very easily, so that's not something I enjoy. Yeah. I stay I'm pretty on that. pretty busy most of the time. Well, thanks for coming. Thanks for being here. For sure. Thanks for having me. Um, so how long you been doing this uh jewelry thing? I didn't even know mm. that uh, until Brooke said something the other day, I didn't even know it was something that you did. Yeah, for a long time, it was something I do hair as well. It was just kind of something I did there, and I've been branching out. Um, probably, I think I, very beginning, not making very great pieces, started in 2012. Right. So it's been just kind of something that's always been a side gig for me that I enjoy doing. I've done art my whole life, so this is just the newest thing I started with other painting and drawing and then kind of just moved into this. Um, I have a really good market for it with my salon and it kind of just went from there. Um, I got connected with Mac and Ashley at M2 and that kind of boosted things and I've been in with them a little over a year now and it's fun getting to do the artistic side of it and not just kind of catering to other people but getting to do my thing and put it out there. Yeah. So with with all art, that's the way to go, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a lot of fun and just kind of getting to be in that kind of that world. It's a different world. What with uh, the gallery? What took you to that? What took you to making jewelry? Of all things, not like and being bored. Um, I went most of my um, in high school and college. I did. I went to college for art for fine arts, and I did sculpture. And it's kind of just a lower scale kind of. Really, it was something practical to do at home that was still like kind of building something yeah um because i uh i have one bedroom house that doesn't work well for throwing some pottery down anywhere or anything so (laughs) it was just something a little more doable and um i really love tedious small work and it's kind of therapeutic for me and so kind of hits a few different levels of all these things that are satisfying and and just in the right market the with my salon and marketing it just kind of took off on its own unexpectedly and now it's just something I get to do in my free time for fun. Nice. Yeah. yeah that's the way to do it. Yeah. That's my favorite way to uh, enjoy out- art outlets. Uh, yeah, absolutely. It's kind of on your own time and your yeah. own thing. Yeah, you get to listen to a podcast or some music or something while I'm doing it, and I'm just kind of doing my chill thing after work and yeah, kind of relaxing for the night. That's fun. Yeah. How long have you been doing hair? Ooh, I graduated hair school in 2011 been doing hair since then um I became an educator for our company a couple of years ago so I get to teach now and that's a lot of fun um yeah here's my jam yeah mm-hmm. what got you into that oh needing to make some money and go into <laughs> school quick unfortunately that's kind of how I think a lot of people get into it but it just um turned out it was pretty natural for me and so I've gotten to I've been very lucky that I was you know, my first salon was a good, nice luxury salon. I think that that helped a lot to kind of set a standard from the beginning and just kind of going from there. Yeah. And it's something that I go to work and I love what I do every day and it's very fulfilling. So, and it gives me outlets. Um, I'm con- what's considered booth rent. So I'm basically my own boss. And mm-hmm. so, you know, when I need to take off for a jewelry show or a gallery show or anything like that, I have the freedom to kind of do what I want to do in my own time and take time off when I need to. I travel a lot and um, pick up a lot of jewelry pieces, different countries that I travel to and try to kind of incorporate, you know, pieces from other countries and vintage pieces and kind of put them all together and make something that's, I prefer to make things that are one of a kind. I will do custom orders of multiple items, but um, I like the one of a kind kind of really just more of an art piece. Yeah. That's, you know, wearable. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Uh, are these hers that you got pulled out? Yeah. Yeah, this is the Instagram. Oh, nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if you go back just a little bit further, um, probably one of my biggest and most successful shows, especially um, the collections that I put up at the M2 Gallery, these are all part of the Christmas collection. Um, we did one right before Christmas, 
that was a she show, and I believe it was 45 artists across the United States that they did, um, all female artists. And I did a collection right here based off of Madonna, and that one did did really well there at the show. And it was really a lot of fun for me to make. That was kind of one that I got to dive into my own creativity and do a little less gold and bling and a little more <laughs> black and silver and a little more edgy, you know? So yeah, that's right. I liked, uh, liked doing that a lot. And with this, um, I am, I'm real big on sustainability through either jewelry or at the salon. I actually work for a sustainable beauty company, but I was able to buy pretty much everything that I did on this collection at local jewelry shops and different things, um, like Argenta Bead Company and different places, and I really like Nice. That I was able to find everything I wanted locally. What's your uh, What's your process when you're doing something like that? Ooh, I um, so I buy a lot of my pieces at estate sales, um, kind of just here and there. I try as much as possible not to go to big box type stores, um, and so I'll find pieces that I really like. I'm a little bit of a jewelry piece hoarder, which is also a problem in a one bedroom apartment. Um, <laughs> but I'll just kind of get a bunch of things and kind of put them together. And I mean, really, I'll just pull something out of a box and be like, okay, where can I go from here? And it, it just builds from there. I don't, I'm not the person that I've seen jewelry makers that have graph paper and they graph out and draw out the piece that they're going to make. And Jeez. that is not my process. I kind of just get into the moment and see where it takes me. And I feel like a lot of my better pieces come that way. Just not so planned out and just kind of going with the artistic flow of it. Yeah. But I, yeah, um, the cross is the Madonna thing. I mean, there's a picture of Madonna up in there. Let's see, right there. And I kind of just zoomed in on some of those and I was like, man, I'd wear like every one of those. I'm going to make a bunch of these. I was like, even if it, nothing sold, I'll just take them home and wear them, you know? So um, just something kind of fun. I feel like a lot of women... Even people that aren't old enough to have really been around during Madonna at that time, like they know the music and they know that look. And it, I think it's, you know, it's a lot, it's a lot of fun. It's something different. And, and I really liked it a lot, just making it. She definitely, definitely was iconic. There's yeah, no doubt for sure. about that. Yeah. And, you know, we, we got all of our women's rights going on now. So we got to find the tough part of Madonna. We can't have the. <laughs> The later Madonna, we got to get that tough girl in there. Yeah, but. she's uh she's wild now. I don't I don't really know what all she's got going on, but it's pretty crazy. Yeah, I know she went through the she went through I guess a calmer phase of her is it Buddhism she does and she wrote some kids books and different things. But jeez, this is my favorite Madonna in this photo. So, um, I really wanted to kind of go with that because I do. A lot of times I sell at different salons and things, and a lot of times it's very dainty, very simple, not necessarily something I'd wear. It's something I do enjoy making, but this was more something that I thought, okay, if I was making this, what would I want it to be? And when I want, when I wear something, I want it to be big. I want it to be a statement piece. And so this was a collection that I kind of got to run with that. And I mean, some of those, I think Brooke wore one that goes down past your belly button, I'm pretty sure. Like, it's a big necklace in her picture. Um, nice. Uh, yeah, and so I just kind of got to go with it and do something just kind of bigger and a little edgier, which is fun. Yeah, for sure. What do you, uh, what do you normally take your inspiration from? Like, um, obviously that collection, like you talked about, but what's like your normal? Yeah, so, um, things that go up to the gallery, I try to kind of match up with the shows that they're having sometimes. We just had one last week and... It was a self-portrait, so, you know, I don't think everybody wants to be wearing a charm with my face on it, so <laughs> I got a little bit different with that one, but a lot of times I'm setting up collections to go with the gallery shows. Other than that, it kind of just depends. A lot of collections I've done, um, like I said, I travel a lot, and when I come back from a different country, I'll kind of do a collection based on, I take travel photography for myself. Um, that's another thing I enjoy doing, but I'll try to do collections that kind of go along with the colors or like the shapes in those pictures. I've been to Iceland a couple of times and it's good as far as like, you know, a lot of geometric shapes, a lot of natural, but bright, vivid colors. And, um, and then, you know, picking up, going to local jewelry shops and picking up pieces to kind of put into that. My travel is probably my biggest thing and that plays into it a lot. Um, and it, you know, makes me have a reason to travel more. So yeah. it, it's kind of perfect. It's a perfect circle. <laughs> yeah. Where uh where have you been? Where you what's your favorite spot? 
Iceland, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. I've heard Oddly Iceland's enough, great. you know, like, most people want to go to a beach, and I'm running off to a waterfall that's half frozen, so, yeah. you know. Well, that sounds cool um, to me. But it's just, it's gorgeous. I've been there a couple of times, and I'll probably go back for my birthday this year, even though I should explore somewhere new, but... Um, my first trip overseas was to Okinawa, Japan for two weeks, and that was a lot of fun. I had a friend that was stationed there, and so I had the opportunity to go and save several thousand dollars just being able to stay with him. And so I thought, okay, well, I'm going to go, you know. Yeah, why not? Um, yeah, broke the ice on that. I've been to Germany, Paris, um, Amsterdam's my second favorite. I've been to Iceland a couple of times. Um, of course, Mexico. I feel like everybody's been to Mexico. Um, I've never been to Mexico. No, we in all my it's travels. close. It's connected to us. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, Amsterdam was another good one. I've got a lot of pieces um, that I bought in Amsterdam that I just haven't done anything with because um, Amsterdam and Iceland, I'm pretty passionate about. So I don't want to just kind of throw some stuff together. I want it to be a collection that you know I'm gonna be really proud of. So yeah. I've just kind of. I keep looking at it every once in a while and trying to get inspiration on it, and I just haven't quite gotten it yet. But uh, but it'll come around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sure it will. But it's fun to get to uh, you know travel with the intention of looking for things here and there. I love a thrift shop. I love a flea market or antique store somewhere you can find a weird oddity or something. Yeah. So that kind of gives me an excuse, especially in these other countries where you're seeing things that are not anything like what you're going to find here. It's fun to just kind of go and pick out pieces and just put them back and wait for the right moment to make something with it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be pretty cool. I always hit um, record shops. That's my jam. Yeah, I do that every once in a while. Um, I have more records than I actually play. I don't know how that worked out, but I've got a record player, and I tend to just – I just love the records for the art on the – the cover you they know are, they are just yeah. as good for that they really are um yeah i love I have them. almost the whole dolly pardon collection nice almost all of it i think i'm like two away i'm really proud of that real nice <laughs> might have to do have mac do some framing on that one and yeah dolly's a good one do a do, do a wall with it yeah a whole dolly wall yeah that'd be pretty cool dreams come true man <laughs> i would yeah. love that <laughs> i think i got i got a couple dolly albums uh, I think I, I inherited like a box set too. Oh, nice! That's pretty cool. Yeah, I don't have a box set, so now I mean, I've got to find that. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I was closer than I am. I don't even think I've listened to it. There's Is it some, old? Yeah. Oh man. Yeah, it's pretty old. I'm gonna need a picture of that. Yeah. I'm gonna have to go search for that now. Well, I'll show you. Yeah, we'll check it out. Nice. I got. <laughs> yeah. I've got so many more though that I. I ever probably will even listen to. Yeah, I noticed your collection when I came in. I could sit there for a few hours and just read every single one and see what you got. It's a lot. Yeah. There's there's quite a bit there. I uh I went a long time um not collecting records uh because I knew it was going to be a problem mm-hmm. once I did and it snowballed for sure. Yeah. Now I buy records because I don't listen to them enough. I, for some reason, it's like when the weather's nice and the windows and the doors are open, I break out the record machine. Yeah. It's something to do. I guess it's just that time of year or something. But I'll listen to them then. Um, so now when I go to record shops, I do it also when I travel and I get one. And I'm like, this one's going to be really special. I'm going to find <laughs> one on this trip that's going to be great. And, you know, so I've gotten a few that way. But yeah, I most of my stuff is vintage as far as the records go, I've got a few new ones, but I like to find the old ones that are kind of hard to find. Yeah. Yeah, that's always a lot of fun, too. Yeah. There's nothing like finding that one, either. Mm-hmm. It's always a good thing. I'm sure that's probably similar to your jewelry, only you're not even really sure what you're looking for. Yeah, it's just... I love just finding something that's just so off the wall, you know. Um, I've We did a, a, a show at the gallery, again, that was a... Um, it was this, I think it was called the Celestial Show, and they had a tarot reader. They had during the day they had some yoga stuff going on, but getting to do some of that, you know, the the sun and the stars and the signs and all that stuff, and just I found a really great. It was like a lion head that was like this big, oh, shit. and I was like, oh man, this is gonna be like a piece of body armor. I got to make something uh-huh. really cool out of it, and I really love that one. I'm, it's really hard for me not to keep a lot of those big pieces that's not what you're here for you gotta let it go <laughs> like my house would be covered in jewelry but but yeah it's it's i think it's a little bit of the thrill of the find yeah with the with a lot of it 
I like a lot of animals and creatures and different things. And so it's it's pretty hard to find cool pieces of those because I think a lot of people, when they're looking, they're looking for things that are similar. So you got to find those cool pieces and then make something even cooler out of it. Yeah. With my hair, I get to do make custom hair pieces for weddings and events and stuff. So that's something, you know, I kind of get to change it up from just jewelry to doing big hair pieces or – I think for the chocolate fantasy ball last year, I made a whole body chain piece that went over a dress that was pretty cool. And oh, shit. so I love doing the custom stuff too. That's that's a lot more fun. It's more inspiring when you have an idea of what they want, but then taking it and like exceeding the expectation and you know making something really awesome. So yeah, I love doing stuff like that. Yeah, that's pretty wild. That's a that'd be a big ordeal. Yeah, it's fun, and they, you know, they're there and they're involved in it because, especially with the piece with the dress, she has to be there, and I'm making it like on her body to make sure it fits right and it sits right, you know. So it's it's a lot of fun getting to have that interaction as well, and you know, they're getting excited about every time you do something. You're like, what do you think about this? And they're like, oh man, that's so cool. Yeah. (laughs) So like, okay, let's do ten more of them then. (laughs) You know. So it's fun, kind of having that one on one connection and making something personal and custom for someone as well. Yeah. Yeah, that would be cool. You know about that. I mean, you're doing that permanently on people's bodies, so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, in a way. It's, yeah, similar, I guess. But uh, I'm trying to picture what, like, a whole dress thing would, would look like. This one was, um, it was actually, it just started with a necklace, and it connected to a piece that basically hung down. From It was like a half body piece. It hung down in the front and went around the side of the leg and up the back. And it was just layers and layers of chain and stuff. It was pretty cool. Wow. I don't, honestly, I don't know that I have a picture of that on my social media. I guess I should. Yeah, you definitely I'll have should. to find something like that. Yeah. It sounds pretty wild. Yeah, it was pretty cool. And I mean, I'd love to do something that's a whole, you know, anybody out there needs a whole body chain dress, let me know. Right? <laughs> That'd be a lot of fun. That'd be really crazy. You got it all, though. Yeah, I do. I've done a a lot of different looks, you know. I try to do some stuff that, like I said, you know, appease different types of people. But really, I always just end up kind of coming back and doing my own thing. These gold earrings there in the center have probably been, God, I I bet I made 150 pair of those. Like, because (laughs) you can dress them up or dress them down. They're probably my top seller. Um, Nice. But just, you know, going from something that big just back down to something, you know, that basic. It's just about uh, kind of keeping in with people, and you can see a little bit right there in that picture. There's a body piece that I made for myself on the shoulder. That one oh, kind of yeah, nice. went down and draped down, too. I wish I had a better picture of that. If you scroll to the side, can you see it a little bit better? Because there's several pictures. You can see a little bit oh, of it yeah. there. So that was a smaller version. That would be like maybe a quarter or the third of the size of the one I that I made for the other event. But what the so what kind of stuff are you using to make these? Just like uh, like tool wise, just some pliers and a. Yeah, I have a few different. I mean, they're just tiny sets um, of different shaped pliers and different. Some of them have like pointy edges. Some of them are curved. It just kind of depends on what you're working with. Um, yeah. Yeah, a lot of it is deconstructed vintage pieces, that, and I do try to reuse all the pieces that I take apart in one way or another. Um, but yeah, a lot of it's just either vintage or that is one thing that I do have to go sometimes to the bigger stores is for like the chain or like the base pieces. But yeah, um, yeah there's a shoot we did with Ashley with one of the bigger pieces. Um but yeah, I mean, it's just like tiny little sets of different types of pliers. I don't even know that they all have names, but I probably have 12 different kinds. And, um, you know, every once in a while you got to pop a little bit of soldering or something in there. I'm not great at that portion of it, but I'll do yeah. it. I know enough about it to get a job done, you know. Yeah. Um, I think my next thing I'm going to try to accomplish is going to be some kind of resin pouring of types to create things. Um I have a couple of ladies who have asked me about they have their mother's old clip-on earrings and they want to make something modern with it. So we're going to figure out how to put those inside of some clear acrylic or something and make some pieces out of it so that it still preserves the original piece without a lot of times people are like taking them completely apart. And so it's not a whole piece of jewelry any longer in case you wanted to go back to that. So I'm trying to figure out how to 
create these custom family pieces without actually destroying the original piece of jewelry. And we've had some pretty good success with it. Yeah. We've had some cool pieces. Yeah. That sounds like it would be stressful. It, it all comes back to being therapeutic for me. And for me, it's an excuse to try out a different kind of art, which I would be doing anyway, mm-hmm. you know? Um, and so it's just kind of getting to take reins on that and do it on my own pace. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty rad. Yeah, we did a few of those. That bottom left-hand corner was a wallet chain, and those were pretty cool. Yeah, I was going to say that's that's what that looks like. Yeah, and so I had where the gun is. I made it to where you could attach different things to it, depending on what, instead of a gun, you could have whatever you wanted. But yeah, those were a lot of fun for a while. We did a little photo shoot with those as well. There's a there's quite a bit too. Like how often are you making new pieces? Oh man, sometimes I'll go two weeks without making anything, and sometimes I'll make like fifteen pieces in one day. Yeah, so it's just really just when the uh, inspiration strikes. Yeah, it's all about the inspiration, and you know, again, that goes back to me kind of being able to be my own boss, to where you know, like if I have a day where it's slow at the salon, I can go home and still get that creative outlet out. Sometimes it's somebody wanting something for a photo shoot and you've got a deadline and you're like, well, it doesn't matter if I'm inspired or not. You got to get it done. And it always, once I get started on it, it just flows from there. It's just sometimes the motivation isn't there to get everything out and get started, but it's always worth it, especially, you know, with pictures like that. I just feel like those turned out so great and, and those custom pieces kind of make it, you know. I'm glad I get to be a part of it. It's pretty cool that, you know, these people are going to have these forever, and these photos are pretty pretty badass. Yeah. I'm lucky that – I'm really lucky that I got in with Mac and Ashley because I – it actually started, I think I did her hair or lashes or something, and that's how it all started. She saw a setup I had at the, the salon, and she does a lot of photography, and then we kind of got together on a few things and kind of just escalated into being able to sell at the gallery, and it's been pretty great. Met a lot of pretty cool people, and yeah, yeah, they have a lot of their artists are are pretty great, and it's a whole new world. It's a pretty good. That would be a pretty good um, relationship too, because she can get stuff from you, and and yeah. then you get these rad pictures too. You know, absolutely. Yeah, I've, I've always it's told good. her if there's something in the gallery or something you see online, if you want it for a photo, you know, yeah, let me know, because I love seeing my stuff in a photo. It's a whole new perspective for me, other than just being on a display you know it's in action how does it really wear and it's that's kind of helped me grow as to make things that are you know going to be more long lasting is if they're moving around in a photo shoot and it works yeah you know that's good it's good to learn from that guy right there in the middle of that uh that thing yeah that's cool the no the other one well i mean that one's cool too but the one above it no, the one on the bottom right. Oh, yeah. That that guy. That's so really that, cool. That all came from, so the bigger pieces were like um, maybe like a 1960s belt that I found somewhere. And then I kind of disassembled all of it and pulled all the pieces apart. Actually, those are all the original pieces. I just rearranged them into a necklace, and that one was pretty cool, yeah. That was really cool. And even cooler that it was a belt. Yeah, I've had a few things that um, I try to sell these things more in the salon because I can tell people about them because I hate taking something vintage and remaking it and it having this cool story and not being there to tell them when they're buying it, you know. Yeah. But I have found old, like maybe from the 50s or 60s, like belly dancing belts and disassembled them and made earrings and necklaces and all kinds of cool stuff. And that stuff to me is the most fun is taking something that's already like that's badass to even be able to find a 1950s belly dancing belt, you know, and then to be able to make it into something that's equally as cool, in my opinion. I hope yeah. it's equally as cool. But, <laughs> um, but yeah, getting to make it something new that's so that people are still wearing it and there's something behind it. It's not just like, hey, I hopped over to Hobby Lobby and bought these pieces, which there's nothing wrong with that. But for me, I just like the aspect of it having that vintage story behind it. You yeah. Know? I love it. Yeah. Yeah, and being that old, there's no telling – what his story was even before that, you know? That necklace has seen some things, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> I have no doubt. Probably so. <laughs> From the look of it, I would even say that. Yeah, that's Ashley right there wearing one of the, the wallet chains. She's modeling it for me. Oh, yeah, 
that's cool. Yeah. Pretty cool. Yeah. What um? What's your favorite thing to make? Like as far as like type of jewelry. Mm. I know you, I know you got a lot of earrings going on for sure. Yeah, I like making really big statement necklaces because I wear those. I know that's not something everybody wears, and that you know there's a lot of earrings because you know everybody wears earrings of one kind or another and they they are fun to make they're a little more instant gratification because they don't take as long but the big yeah. statement pieces where i'm taking time and sometimes it'll be months that i'm collecting different pieces to make something that i don't know i'm making yet um but then getting to put all those pieces together into one big piece is it's really fulfilling to me i love a big statement necklace um that's why I think the Madonna collection was one of my favorites is because some of those were really big pieces and they're not everyday wear pieces, but they are, when that time comes, they're going to be cool and, you know, yeah, people are going to notice it. And that's my favorite thing to make. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think that one with all those crosses on is probably my favorite. Yeah. Yeah. That was pretty rad. Yeah, if I could, I'd take that whole collection and wear it at once, but, you know, <laughs> I probably wouldn't be able to walk around because there's some pretty big pieces. Yeah. Do you ever have to factor in anything like that? Like, this is going to be a pain in the ass to wear around? Or yeah, stuff for sure. Like that? Yeah, one of the main things that I get really from women of all ages is at some point or another, they've, like, torn their ear open with a pair of heavy earrings. And so I have to be really conscious when I'm buying supplies to, to buy these lighter pieces because, I mean, I've probably heard that more than I haven't heard it. So you have to be oh, really shit. conscious, like... I will wear a big gaudy earring even if I feel like my ear is going to fall off. But if you can't wear it, you know, you're not going to buy it. So, so yeah, it's part of the challenge is finding pieces that you can still make a big gaudy earring, but it's not heavy. Um, and that is probably the hardest part is factoring into those kinds of things. And when I wear a necklace, I like the weight of a big necklace, but a lot of people don't want to feel jewelry they're wearing. So it's a, it's a bit of a challenge that I think very opposite of what most people are thinking, and I yeah. I really have to take that into consideration. Yeah. yeah. That was definitely always, like, my thing because I had my big old earplugs, and mm -hmm. even though it was, like, the weight, I'd be like, mm, I'm over it. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's definitely a challenge because I do like to make bigger pieces. And so with that Madonna collection, I was able to make some bigger pieces, but they were still lightweight. And it's just about, it's all about figuring out how to rearrange because I could use the same pieces and add one thing and it would totally change it for somebody to be able to wear it or not. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, it's, it's a challenge to figure out how to make it cool but efficient at the same time. Yeah. You got any that you've done lately that uh, you've been pretty stoked on? I have a collection at the gallery that I just put in last Monday. This, Yeah, I guess a week ago today. It's I don't have pictures of it on my social media yet. Sorry. <laughs> um, I try to let it sit there for a week or two before I put it out most of the time unless Mac and Ashley are promoting it. Um, but I have some pretty cool pieces that are um, – they're vintage styled. They are not vintage, but they're vintage style brooches. But ones like there's an alligator, there's a chameleon, there's a, several other different critters. But I've made them to where um, you can wear it as a necklace, but I've also made it to where you can take that brooch off and still wear it separately. Um, so that was kind of a cool challenge to go with, but also just having something that's kind of vintage styled. Again, I like creatures. So when there's an alligator or an iguana or a chameleon or something, I'm like, okay, what can I make out of this? Because <laughs> nobody else is going to be wearing this around. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah. The necklace and brooch idea, that's pretty cool too. Yeah, um, I was able to do that with a couple of them, not all of them, just because of the way that they're made. But the ones that you can transition, I like a lot. Yeah, that's a pretty neat idea. So I'm always trying to find some way of making something where it can be a little more customizable um, just to add an extra challenge to it and see if I can accomplish it. And I could with some of those and some of those I couldn't. But, um, but yeah, and, you know, with the uh, wallet chain and different things, just being able to switch out a little piece and make it match what you want it to match, yeah. you know, a little easier. Yeah. Yeah, a little fun stuff. Yeah. <laughs> little I like little hidden things. Like when I shop for stuff, I'm always like, ooh, what will this do? You know, so it's fun to kind of try to incorporate that into my things as well. So when you're not making jewelry or cutting hair, what are you doing? 
oh man, I love true crime. I'm probably yeah. learning about a murder of some sort because I'm <laughs> real into that. <laughs> probably more than I should be. Um, I do paint and do different things. Um, kind of anything artsy. I have a dog. I have an old dog, so I kind of try to hang out with her a little bit. What kind of dog is she? I have a 13-year-old basset hound. No. Yeah, she's real sweet, but man she's never quiet ever <laughs> like she cries herself to sleep she whines herself to sleep she's very vocal poor thing i have a cat a seven-year-old cat and i have a 55 gallon aquarium i'm a crazy fish lady oh I have shit snails really and shrimp and all kinds of stuff i have six new babies this week Whoa. <laughs> i'm pretty much an 84 year old in a 33 year old <laughs> body i'm not even shy about it anymore it's pretty true um but yeah, I uh, I do a lot of podcasting. Yeah? Yeah. If I'm not making jewelry, I'm painting or doing something else in that same workspace of my house, you know. Um, I really have to, I my whole life have had, I really have to get my creativity out or it kind of makes me crazy. I, I get backed up and then I get stressed out and it's really a great stress reliever for me. So I try to try to make something every day regardless of what it is. Um, a lot of times it is jewelry, but even if it's not that, just making or doing something. Yeah. Yeah. I don't do well being bored, so I've always got a project or two going on at the same time. <laughs> I always say that uh, I don't like being bored until I can't be bored. And mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, man. God, I wish I could just go sit on the couch. Yeah, I need nothing. some time to do nothing. You sit on the couch and you're like, man, I need to do something. Yeah. I can't. I yeah. can't. I should be doing something. Yeah. Yeah. I don't do good with... I can relax when it's needed, but it's hard. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta be exhausted. Yeah. But I do a lot. My my hair business keeps me very busy, and there are times that, you know, I might I'd be forced to take a week or two off from making jewelry just because by the time I'm off work, it's like I can't do another thing, you know? Yeah. Um. So it does keep me really busy, and I do... With the educating, you know, outside of the the daily work, you know, I may have a Sunday, Monday where half my day is teaching. Um, and so, yeah, I stay pretty busy. How long have you been doing that? The educating part, maybe two years or so, but I've been with the company I'm educating for for about nine years. Been using their products and everything. What, uh, what all goes into that? Like, what are you teaching? I am teaching other stylists around town. I go to salons and teach them about our company. Um, our company is Davines, and it's based out of Parma, Italy. Um, they're a sustainable beauty company. They're really great about, even as educators, when we fly, we have to log miles when we fly and send it back to Italy, and they, um, they uh, cover the carbon footprint of us flying, and they'll do something there to cover that so that it equalizes everything out like it never happened they I mean they plant trees they all kinds of amazing things hmm. yeah the uh, the main ingredients of our products are usually a vegetable most of our product line is vegan um, and they go all the way back to a family farm that doesn't use chemicals they don't use electric machines I mean they're using like an animal and they're standing on a plow and plowing the land and um, and they do that because some of the farms were kind of going under and so they wanted to preserve that and so now they don't outsource if they have a natural disaster they just don't use that product until the farm's back on their feet and those are all just things that I'm really into they're um, a B corporation which just I think there's like 900 companies now that are B corporations but they all just kind of give back to the environment um, and I'm, I'm real into the sustainability thing so I love it and um I've been with them my whole career, and I can't imagine that I won't stay with them as long as I'm doing hair, because yeah. I really stand for a lot of things. That we stand for the same things, and so I can appreciate that. Yeah, that's that's intense. That's a lot. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> that's, yeah. uh, you really, it always, like, you'd have to go the extra mile for all that, for sure. It's pretty yeah, impressive. Yeah, and they do, and it's it's really great. They really put a lot of effort into that. How'd you, how'd you wind up uh, hooked up with them and working for them? I was really lucky in my first job out of hair school. I was an assistant for maybe eight months or so, and I assisted under two women that one of them is actually our national master trainer, and that's who I assisted under and worked for her for a while. And then 
we went our separate ways when I became a stylist and she was at a different salon and now actually I work for both of them again they opened a salon um, last March and asked me to come work for them and now we're back together but they are the ones um, Alicia who is a national master trainer um, it was just an exclusive thing at that salon at the time and so I just got really lucky that it, I happened into them I kind of stumbled into it and um, just kind of clung to it because the longer that I've been with the company, the more and more that they're doing. And so for me, the fact that they're putting so much work into it, um, makes me want to put more work into it. Yeah, definitely. So I stand behind it, you know, a hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. And we're lucky that we're in a, um, a, uh, man, I can't think of my words right now. We have a 10 state range that our, um, product provider, it's modern salon services, um, carries Davines, and so it's all just it kind of all just fell into place that I'm in the right place at the right time, and I get to use it and I get to learn about it and spread all that knowledge. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, once you explain that to people, I think people don't realize how big of a deal it is until you really get into it and explain it, and then they're like, "Oh wow, they, that's a big deal." It's not just like, "Oh, they took a chemical out," you know? Yeah, they took milk out of it to make it vegan. It's it's company wide. It's not just the products. They have all kinds of other projects that they do. You can go on, I believe, on their website right now and call it. It's called um, a tree of you, and you do a tree and you design it. And when you turn it in, I believe they plant a tree for every, maybe every ten people who create an online tree on their website. They're actually going out and planting a tree. Online tree. What do you mean? Like you just go on and it's like. Um, I think you're just kind of like decorating it and each thing that you're adding to it, it means something like it has a meaning behind it. So you can choose to put that on it. Like a Christmas um, tree? Yeah, there you are. You could just kind of pick what tree you wanted. Yep. You put your name on there. <laughs> Randy's tree. All right. Here we go. I guess it'll have you log in. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I got your information now. Gotcha. How it worked. <laughs> <laughs> so you just, you just put stuff on there? Yeah, and then once you create it, um, I don't think it's every tree that's online. I think it's X amount. I, th I believe it's 10 trees, like every mm -hmm. 10 that they do. I could be wrong on that number. Um, but they're going in and they're actually planting trees. Um, Davin S um, just built a village in Parma, Italy, and it's all sustainable. Um, there it is. Yeah, you play it, they plant it. Nice. Yeah. Um, but their village, I mean, they're growing products that they're using to test their products on. So they're all the way down to they're literally growing the tomatoes that they're creating the shampoo with to test the shampoo before they put it out into a market. I mean, it's it's pretty incredible. It's all just right back down to the very basics that they do. They're not outsourcing from big companies or companies that don't have their same ideas. Yeah. So it's pretty great. It's pretty wild. Yeah. So, yeah, it says that they, um, they've they planted 500 pomegranate trees already, which is pretty great. That's a lot. Yeah. And That's that a lot of trees. Just in 2019, which is when this started, and this is probably not completely updated information, like, for the moment, so I'm sure it's yeah. higher than that, you know. Yeah, 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 definitely. And then when you do it, when you get done, it shows your little tree on the map, so you can see where everybody in the world's done their tree. Oh shit! Yeah, that's fancy. Oh yeah, yeah there it is. Virtual forest. Yeah. Fancy. I'm trying to see if you can like click on it and maybe it'll like get closer. Uh, or... Yeah. There you go. So it's fairly new. This is something we did what's called there TTT, which is train the trainer. So I went to Kansas City for a trainer with everybody else that does what I do. Um, and so they just told us about this two weeks ago. So, I mean, you know, for having over 1500 trees, that's pretty great that I mean, it's not even, like, a public thing. That's just the people within our company that have done it so far. And, like, we're spreading the knowledge about it. It's spread, like, everywhere, too. Look at that. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. pretty great. Um, I mean, you can look up Davines and their salons. I can't remember. Maybe, like, can't remember how many countries. There's a lot of countries that Davines is in. Yeah. Um, 
you know, especially in Europe, because if you think about Scandinavia and different places, they're all about sustainability. That's just their way of life. So it's kind of natural for them to go into it. Um, that's why I love it so much is that it's catching on here, but a lot of people aren't really into the sustainability thing just yet, or they, they're into the idea of it, but not actually doing it. And so it's nice to be able to kind of yeah. help spread that around. And I, it does always sound good. It's just a lot tougher on uh, in real life than on paper. Absolutely, yeah. I think that's most people's yeah. problem with it. Absolutely. But, you know, recycle one thing, it's better than none. Oh, for sure. Just, all you got to do is try. Make a little 10% shift. That's I worth get, it. I actually get, like, a little upset sometimes with our recycling guys. Like, yeah. there's a lot of shit they just don't take. Little Rock is not, um, and we, you guys are in my mouth, but um, I think just in this area in general is not super recycling friendly i'm not bashing anybody by any means but um you know like just from home you can't recycle glass you have to take your glass somewhere specifically to have it recycled um i know that our salon we've really tried to do recycling but they don't have recycling for businesses from what i've been told which yeah kind of blows my mind if we were going to have one or the other you'd think the businesses would be able to be the ones recycling since they're mass producing things um but they don't, and I'm sure that there is a group of people working on that um, yeah. locally. I think when Megan, like when Megan first started, uh, she was trying to get like something going so we could do some recycling there at the studio yeah. too. And they were like, "No, nah, just throw it all in the dumpster." You may check into. There's a company. I don't know if it's just salons, but you guys are so like our industries are so similar that I'm sure that they would do it. It's called Green Circle. Mm-hmm. Um, and I know for salons that they will actually, like if we over mix colors or anything and we're throwing those chemicals in the sink, essentially not only is it rusting out your pipes and destroying your pipes, but it's going into the water supply. Um, and so they will actually, um, they have a system where they will, I'm not sure, I think they pick up your recycling, but also those chemicals, you put them in a container and they come pick that up and dispose of them correctly. But there are multiple things that they do along the lines of that. Um, and you do, I, I believe you pay monthly or maybe annually to, to be a part of that, but it's a big deal. Um, yeah. And they make sure that these things are being taken care of for businesses. Um, and that is not an Arkansas thing. I believe that's something that Davines does, and that's how we were um, told about it. Nice. You know, I never thought about that though. I bet you guys do like so many chemicals, man. Yeah, and I never day, even thought day. about that. Like yeah. just getting rid of those. Yeah, that whole going into hair school to be in school real quick was because I never wanted to do math or chemistry again. And little <laughs> did I know I would be doing that with every person I talk to every day. Yeah, so pretty much it's a, definitely a different form of it. Jesus. But uh, yeah, all chemistry. Um, yeah, and one of the things I teach is because our company just transformed um, and redid our color and now it's completely vegan. So it's down to like the molecules that we're telling other people about so they understand how the color works so it's it's oh, shit. I put myself right back into that category unknowingly but i and now in the career that i'm in i love it it's different than being in high school and being in a chemistry class which was not my jam me neither man but, no no classes were really my jam though yeah Wasn't hey i fan. liked all of them i just math and chemistry just didn't make sense to me at the time i guess i just had to get my hands in it and <laughs> and work with it and not just be looking at it i'm still not that great at it yeah <laughs> as long as you can you know do what you need to do and so i have a calculator yeah well don't get me wrong i calculate a lot of things yeah i have to i don't have enough fingers and toes to do all the math i need i'm telling you and i was terrible at algebra but somehow i was really great at geometry which to me, makes no sense because don't you use algebra and geometry? I mean, isn't that yeah, the basis you're like of it? Looking up like area and stuff, but geometry oh, still is like you shit. lost me already. <laughs> 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 yeah, I don't know what it was about. I guess it's letters and numbers together didn't make sense to me, but in the color world, it works for me. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. Yeah. I was I wasn't good at any school. I didn't like school. Did you you go- weren't good at it or you didn't show up to it? Both. <laughs> well, those come hand in hand, I think. Yeah, probably. <laughs> did, you, where, did you go here? Where would you grow up at? Where'd no, you- um, I kind of moved around a lot growing up all through high school. I went to all four years of high school in Paris, Arkansas, 
We can oh, bleep shit. that out. Thank you. <laughs> um, but I moved to Little Rock in maybe 2006. It's been a while. I've only been to Paris once. And actually, I feel like I was having this exact conversation with someone not that long ago. Was it me in the shop when I was getting my tattoo done with Ryan? Did we talk about Paris? Maybe. I try not to, but... I don't know. Someone said something <laughs> about Paris, and I was like, I've been there one time. And yeah, because I was in there like three time. weeks ago. Yeah. Is Paris terrible? It's just it's, small town. There's nothing um, there. I hope nobody from Paris is hearing this, but you either leave, you work at a factory, or you do meth. From my experience, yeah. so there's not a lot, just not a lot of options. Nice. You know, I can't imagine what I would be doing if I was still there. I Probably mean, on the latter end of that list. That's <laughs> most Good places. Outside I ran of as soon as I could. So, yeah. yeah. Um, but I've been. In, I moved to Conway for like a year and a half or something, and then went ahead and moved up to Little Rock, and I've been here since. I was maybe twenty. Yeah. So you know, four years ago. It's all like all those small towns are like that. They're all. Yeah. And everyone has the same idea. We yeah. got to get the fuck out of here. Yeah. Which I, I don't mean, blame Or them. you don't, and you work in a gear factory, so nothing yeah. wrong with that, but I can't even sit behind a desk. I can't imagine anything that's just that routine. No. Yeah. The factory work's not great. Yeah. I did. I've never done it, but I like that I get to do something different every day. Even though I might be doing somebody's hair, it's always something different. Yeah. And I, I got to have that change of pace or I'll go crazy. Do um, you, you have any horror stories with people's hair? Sure. I can only imagine oh. like that would be a nightmare because a lot of people are super particular about their hair anyway. Yeah. Um, I feel like the further into my career I get, the more uh, wise I've gotten on asking however many questions it takes before <laughs> we get started. I used to just be like, oh, you want to be blonde? Perfect. We can do that. Well... Maybe we can't do that, you know. Yeah. Um, I have never fried anybody's hair off. I've never given a chemical cut. But, of course, things have turned out differently than I expected. Um, I I like to maintain a good relationship with my clients. So I've been very lucky that if something like that happens, you know, they trust me to fix it. And, yeah. and we'll do it right then. I'm not going to make you walk around for a week <laughs> with something crazy. So, um, yeah. Yeah. Um, that hasn't happened in a long time. I'm going to... Knock on wood here that that doesn't happen this week. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, and I, I do think that educating comes into that because understanding it from a chemical standpoint and why it does what it does makes it a lot easier not to make those mistakes. Yeah. Yeah, I could definitely see that. Yeah. But that would be, yeah, that would be... I think that would make me more nervous than, like, tattooing someone. I don't know about that i'd be pretty upset if i got a bad tattoo <laughs> i guess you can cover it up but um yeah i mean people are definitely very particular about their hair but i get it i am too so um i think just being clear in the beginning um and understanding that sure we can get you there maybe not today but we can get you there as long as you're i think as long as you're vocalizing more than enough information you're going to be yeah. fine it's when you don't give enough that i think it becomes an issue yeah, that's, I don't, I know so little about hair. Well, just don't be a hairstylist. <laughs> I'm definitely not. <laughs> the only person that, uh, whose hair I cut is mine. Oh, well, is uh, it a challenge? Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes it's very hard. <laughs> yeah, um, no, I haven't had any disasters lately. I do a lot of, I also do eyelash extensions, so about half of my salon time is down in that room as well. Um, and that was something that, again, I just kind of was natural at, that I feel like there's a lot of people who don't maybe get trained or just aren't really natural at it. So it's nice that it came naturally to me, because I feel like if it hadn't, it would be very difficult to figure it out. Um, what is that process even? How does that work? Yeah, it's just one individual eyelash extension, like one eyelash that might come off of your eye attached to every individual one of your eyelashes, one at a time. What? And you have to, basically, I have two pair of needle nose tweezers, and my left hand is individualizing one natural lash, and the right hand is putting one on the other one. It's very tedious. Again, I love tedious small work. I think that that's how I fell into jewelry is because I was doing that, and I was already... Like, I have very steady hands, and I like doing these things. And so 
I kind of just transitioned into that. Um, but yeah, like I think the average, I think the average eyelashes on a person's eye is like 150 on each eye. Holy shit. And so like, you know, if I'm doing like a big glam set, I mean, that's a lot of lashes because some of those will have two or three lashes on each one. And so it's very small, tedious work, and I love it. I did not even realize that that was a thing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That is super intense. Mm -hmm. How long does something like that normally take? Um, When I first started doing it, a new set probably took me about two and a half hours. I can do a new set in about 45 minutes to an hour now. Jesus. Yeah, and that's something I don't think that that's really typical. I have a lot of people who tell me that I worked a lot faster than maybe their last person or this or that. Um. And I don't know why that is. It's just, I also am not one to waste time. So I think I'm just not chatting with them. And I'm just like, let's get this job done. We've got a lot of work to do, you know? Yeah. Um, but I love doing it. Yeah. So it's, that is instant gratification. An hour later and you're like, bam, like sashing Jeez. out of the salon. <laughs> How long does something like that last? You, so with eyelash extensions, you come back in every two weeks and so what's happening is as your natural lashes shed, if they're done correctly and not all glued together, um, that extension comes off when your natural lash sheds. And so as a natural lash grows out, you're putting a new one on there. Oh so every God. two weeks, I mean, and you could have them the rest of your life. Oh, my God. Yeah. People often ask if they're permanent. They're not permanent. But you, if you maintain them, you can keep them however long you want to. So do you, like... Oh my god, I have so many Randy's questions. Randy's mind is blown. Yeah. I have so <laughs> many <perplexed>. questions here. <laughs> so, it's pretty great. If you if you want to pull up my Instagram for hair, you can see some pictures and kind of what it looks like. It's Little Rocks with an S. Main, mm-hmm. M-A-N-E. Oh, sorry, I got ahead of you. My god. Event. That's me right there. Okay. I thought you meant Post Malone. I was like, that doesn't look like you. Yeah, I do his lashes. <laughs> no bigs. <laughs> yeah, do teeth whitening. I forgot to put that up today. Um, if you will scroll down, she has lashes on. Um, she, that was just a selfie that she took. Um, but if you will. Right here. That's a lash lift and tint. That's actually a lash perm in color. That's what? not extensions. Yeah, I can, I can perm your lashes. Perm? Looks like I haven't put a lash picture up in a minute. I am so confused by lash perm. Hmm. She has lashes on as well. Man, I've been doing a lot of hair. <laughs> Those are lash extensions there. Jesus. And that's just, that's what's called a classic set. We don't necessarily do every single lash. Like if they don't want like a big glam look, you can just do what's called a classic set. Um, and so each of those are put on individually. Oh my God. What are those things made out of? And then that picture right there, um, you can get synthetic, you can get mink, which are actually mink hairs off of a mink animal. Um, if for people who want like a more subtle, um, it's just a finer hair and it's, if they want something natural, I guess. Yeah. Fancy. Yeah. So the top ones in that picture, that a, we've got colored lashes. Those are actually purple and blue and black all mixed in together. And that just shows some different looks. Like some of them are short and natural and the other ones are kind of big and glam those all yeah those are all put on one at a glam. time they all look glam <laughs> <laughs> those are like triple the size of my yeah. eyelashes well yeah most people don't get them the same length as theirs even if they want them natural they're like i mean you can go a little bit longer and i'm like i know i know yeah, <laughs> yeah i didn't even know that was a thing yeah and i promise you 90 percent of the people you see have them Really? And you yeah. don't know Anytime that they do. Anytime you see like a natural faced girl on the internet, especially if she's like an Instagrammer, she probably has lash extensions. Oh, 98%. Yeah. That goes up to 98.7% that she has lashes on. <laughs> yeah. Wow. I mean, people, I've had women who have said that they would rather, they've stopped getting their nails done to get their lashes done. If they financially can't afford both, they'd rather have their lashes done. Like everybody does it now. It's really exploded over probably the last five years or so. It's so intense. Yeah, but it's great. I mean, you wake up and you look like you have your face done and you don't have to do anything. Like a lot of women don't wear makeup that have them because they're like, I just feel like my eyes look open and I look rested. So why would I spend any time doing anything else? Yeah. I mean, I guess whatever works. Yeah. Man. 
15 or 30 minutes a day putting on and taking off makeup or an hour every two weeks, you know? Yeah, that is a better deal. Yeah. Time-wise, for mm-hmm. sure. That if you go down that middle picture there with the eyes is kind of the process of the lash perm. So you actually have a silicone pad, and that's a perm solution like you would do on your hair, and it perms your lashes up so that they're curled. She also has a brow color on, but the pink part is the perm, yeah. That's crazy. So it just basically just flips them up? Yeah, so like your lashes are, there's an adhesive you use to stick them to that rod, and then you put the perm solution on, and it forms that curl into that hair so that they stay curled up. Last, that lasts six weeks instead of just two. That is super wild. Yeah. Yeah, that the one to the bottom right, that's her. That's a before and after. Like, you can really tell on her eyes the difference. Oh, wow. And she looks like she has lash extensions on. She just has really great natural lashes. But yeah, I like tedious work. That is super tedious. Mm-hmm. Each individual yeah. lash. That I do a lot of lash so extensions crazy. and hair extensions all just because it's kind of repetitive little work that ends up with a big result. I like a big result. <laughs> <laughs> do they do hair extensions the same way? Um, They're not done that way. The middle picture there is hair extensions, and then the girl to the left of her actually has hair extensions in. Those are her before and after. Um. But the care, the extensions that I do, I'm trained in four different kinds, but the main keratin bonded ones that I do, like the end of it looks like a shoestring and there's just a machine that heats it up and then you just kind of press the hair into it and then it's there up to six months. Really? I mean, most people are closer to four, but they, if you really take care of them, they can last six months. Yeah. Do you, you just go about your everyday thing like with? Yeah. You would just do everything like you normally would, except you'll have way more hair. Weird. Yeah. I didn't know that was like that either. See, I know I know absolutely nothing about hair, apparently. <laughs> it's because you don't have any. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's very good. We, I guess we could put some extensions in your beard for <laughs> you. Have a long, flowing beard. I can grow that thing out, <laughs> but it looks pretty terrible. I don't know how to take care of it. I flat ironed a couple of beards either. before. That's real weird. Like when a beard is straight and blows in the wind, there's just something yeah. wrong with that. <laughs> That's uh, so the last strange. time I had mine pretty long. That's what I was doing because it it just gets so thick and yeah terrible really when it gets yeah. like super long. But then it does look crazy when you straighten it out. Is it real curly? It looks straight. No, I think it's pretty. It gets like wavy, I guess. Yeah. And I I don't know how to take care of it, so it just looks terrible. Just put some oil in it. Mm. Just cut it off. Yeah. Keep it short. Yeah. Most of the time it grows out of just laziness. Yeah. That's all. All of my hair. Anytime that there's hair, it's just because I've been too lazy to shave it off. It's too bad we don't have that option. Got to imagine shaving your whole body. I mean, you could. Shave your face. You could. <laughs> you could. <laughs> there's some. Um, I'm. I mean, I'm, there's definitely some people that do, for sure. Yeah. I mean, more power to them. I would I would not be comfortable not because of a social norm and just I don't want hair all over my body. I guess I'm trained to it now. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. Hair's pretty awesome. I love it. It's definitely pretty crazy. I didn't realize all of that went into it. Yeah, it's fun. It's doing something different all the time. Even when you're doing the same thing, it's different. So This little lady, the one that's in the middle, Miss Jo, she's a she's actually the poet laureate in Little Rock. She was just honored last year. She's I can't remember if she's in her late eighties or early nineties, but we've been jamming her with some powder pink and powder blue extensions in her hair and she loves it. Like every day she comes in to get her hair done, she's like, You got some more of those extensions. <laughs> <laughs> like she's addicted to them. I love it. That's definitely a common thing now, like not a normal color hair. Yeah, and I mean, for her, she's like, some of my my adult nieces hate it, and she's like, but my younger nieces love it, and I love it, so I'm going to keep them. I'm (laughs) like, Miss Jo, you're 90 years old, you do whatever you want. Yeah, right. If you want pink and blue hair, you just have it. Yeah, if you've made it that far, you do whatever you want. For sure. Nobody should be able to stop you at all. (laughs) You've earned it. 
Yeah. She, I love her to death. She's, she's been with me pretty much from day one and she walks in with her cane and tells us it's her swagger stick and she swaggers right on back to my chair. She is, she is the best. I love her. Is that your best of him? That's her. That's her at the new salon. That's our entrance to our salon. No. She's pretty sweet. What's her name? Andy. A-N-D-I-E. She's a girl. (laughs) Right, right, right. (laughs) I don't know what I was thinking. (laughs) But yeah, she's she's sweet, but she's a mess. I had a little bass hound for a while. She was the same way. Yeah. She's a little troublemaker. I always think if I got another dog, I think it would still be a basset hound, no matter how much trouble she is, because she's really a good dog. She's very smart and well behaved. Those ears, the ears of a basset hound, are just the most adorable things. They're the best, yeah. Like little wingspan yeah Yeah, almost as long as their whole body Mm -hmm. (laughs) yeah she's so funny she's i don't think a lot of people know it but basset hounds are bred for like hunting animals that burrow in the ground Mm -hmm. and so actually they can run long distances even though they're short you know and man she'll get to run and we go to the dog park or something and her ears are just like flying behind her it is the funniest thing yeah that's what i always laughed at or when she would, like, drag them through, like, the mud. Mm-hmm. I'd be like, what are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> I got really lucky with Andy. She doesn't drool, but she will get her ears in the water. So, like, there's still water drips, but it's <laughs> yeah. her ears. It's not her mouth. I'm like, come on now. Yeah. We used to put her ears up in a scrunchie, but she's old and grouchy now, so we don't get to do that anymore. <laughs> Have you had her since she was a pup? She was right under six months old when I got her. Yeah, she'd been given to a family out in Ferndale somewhere that they had a bunch of show Yorkies and she was given to them as a gift, which I don't recommend giving gifts of animals when people don't want them. Yeah. It's Um, a bad idea. But she stayed outside in the backyard. She could see in their French doors from about six weeks to six months and she could see all the dogs playing inside, but they wouldn't let her inside. And so I went to go look at her. I didn't know all that till I got there. And then I was like, well, I can't leave her here. Like, the poor thing. She's just a baby. She just wants somebody to love her. And, of course, I mean, I'd already, like, made eye contact. So, of course, I was going (laughs) home with her because I have no self-control. But, yeah, I've had her since. And she's she's a good dog. Yeah. Now she just sleeps all day. She's just old and enjoying life. Yeah. That's the way that they should be. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, she's a good dog. She and my cat. My cat thinks that my dog is his mama. So they sleep in the same bed and harass me together. How long have you had the cat? He will be seven in June. They have a birthday a month apart. Jeez Louise, yeah. you got some old animals. Yeah, he's finally starting to calm down. He was inside outside most of his life, and he's he was a wild cat for a long time. <laughs> and now I'm, I feed him wet food every day, and he's getting fat, so yeah. he's not as wild. He's just like, it's fine, I'll sleep. Ready to chill out. Yeah. More wet food, please. Right. He, I'm telling you, he wakes me up by knocking on my bedroom door in the morning because he's ready for breakfast. So oh, man. they have me nicely trained. <laughs> Cats are wild. Cats are wild animals. Yeah. Yeah, he's learned he can put his hand under the door and pull it, and it knocks. Like, it sounds like he's knocking on the door. So he's That's he's so not crazy. playing. <laughs> it's so crazy. Yeah, he's a, he's a mess. We've got Andy under control, but now he's taken over on that that side of it. He's a mess. And you say you have a big fish tank? 55 gallon. It's behind my couch, yeah. Jeez. Yeah, I love it. It's it's fairly new. I just got into that maybe in October, so all that's pretty new. But I love it. I know all the people at work are so tired of hearing about my fish. <laughs> I just had six babies. I got to tell everybody. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of fish do you have in there? Um, Gosh, I have several different kinds i have nine quarry catfish they're just kind of bottom feeders they kind of clean up crew for the tank i have a bunch of blue velvet shrimp and some red cherry shrimp and i have some loaches they look like little mini snakes they're real quick they're pretty cool but they're nocturnal so they don't come out a whole lot and then i have maybe nine guppies and then the six baby guppies that were born this week they're they're transparent they're like literally just a black stomach and two black eyes like and they're like literally this big they're they're just the tiniest cutest little things i'm obsessed with them right now so i get real excited talking about it (laughs) yeah 
No, but I bet I have three or four hundred snails because they repopulate real quick. So. Do they? Yeah, I've already given away probably a hundred just since October, and I'll have oh, to get yeah. rid of a lot more. Yeah, coming up. Yeah. What does that say? Guppies eat their babies? Yeah, you got to separate the mothers after they give birth. Oh, look at those. Look at the little ones. It's traumatizing. What? Yeah. Eating the baby? Yes. Look, it looks like a tiny yeah, I know. little version. Like, I watched them give birth because I was like, the second that the one of them was done giving birth, I was like, you got to go. Like, if I see you eat one of these babies, I will have a heart attack and die. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot watch this. What do they do that for? Because it's a tiny thing moving around. I think sometimes if there's something wrong with it, it's kind of like a mercy thing. Mm -hmm. But also, I mean, because typically they're in a tiny little, it's called a breeder box. It's like this big. It's really small. And so if they're just in there and they're hungry and it's something tiny moving around, they're going to eat it. I'll be honest with you. I didn't even realize that uh, that's what a guppy looked like. Yeah. They're kind of cool looking fish. Yeah, I just... I had no idea about any of this. It was kind of a therapy thing. I've been dealing with a breakup kind of a situation. And I was like, eh, well, it's something that we can get my mind off of this. And then um, my grandmother was gracious enough to buy me a fish tank over Black Friday. It was part of my Christmas, she said. Um, and so I kind of got into it. And there's a local fish shop called The Fish Tank that's over on Bowman. And they're really good about, like, I could go in there and I was like, okay, can I have this? Can I have this? You know, and they, they're good about explaining. I wanted a community tank that was peaceful. I don't want fish that are going to eat other fish because just like with Andy, the second I saw this guppy, I was like, you're my baby. I don't want another <laughs> fish eating it. And so I actually have a beta that they say you can't put them in tanks, but he's in there because he's the only one. But yeah, we've never had any issues. We have a very peaceful community tank. Everybody eats and is courteous of everyone else yeah <laughs> <laughs> but they also probably eat more than they should so they have no reason to be aggressive in any way because i'll just sit there and be like here just keep eating it so i can watch you chubby fish hey i'm fine with any of my animals being chubby <laughs> but yeah they're very entertaining it's it's like as big as that one is it's like another tv you know so you can just sit there and watch it and there's it's a whole nother ecosphere, you know? You, yeah. There's just, everything's going on. You can watch it forever. Fish are wild, too. They're, they're pretty crazy. Yeah. I'm kind of a crazy plant lady, and so all the plants that I have in my aquarium are live as well, and so it's kind of cool to watch. Because, like, aquarium plants, the babies will grow off the leaves. It's not out of the ground, and so it's pretty cool because then they grow to a certain size, and then they'll fall off and plant themselves. Oh, so nice. it's, like, a whole different system of growing plants and it's very interesting to watch it yeah because i i mean i had no idea that underwater plants that's how they propagated you know just assume they were like any other plant but they're not i wonder if you probably have to keep them from getting out of control maybe even then at some point i kind of honestly thought i have some that like floats on the top of the water and it i've had to get rid of it a couple of times because it grows really fast yeah but the stuff that's actually planted down in the substrate i'm i'm just like come on grow faster grow <laughs> faster but also you know I, I know i'm being impatient with it but it's very interesting to watch all of it do its thing does your is your cat eyeball it he has paid attention to it about twice yeah he my cat is he's a strange little fellow he doesn't like the tv he actually will leave the room if the TV is on. And for him, I think it looks like a TV. Hmm. And so he has, every once in a while, he'll sit on the back of the couch if I'm on the couch and kind of mess with me. And then he'll mess with it a little bit. But about two seconds and he's done. He could not care less about those fish. That's good. Yeah, I was kind of shocked. Yeah, I could imagine that most cats would be like, hmm, this is cool. Yeah, let me get one of these snacks out of here. Yeah. No, and he's he's a good little hunter, so I've, I'm very surprised that he's not into it. I really thought it would be an issue, and it's not. But. Which, uh, you got a favorite fish? Yeah, my betta is my favorite. He was my very first one. My very, very first aquarium before my grandmother got me that one, I got just like a little tiny five-gallon, you know, one of those um, splurges, last-minute splurges, and I got it, and I got him, and... 
Um, so my first little five gallon aquarium, I called the bento box. And so his name is Wasabi <laughs> and everybody had sushi names. It was pretty great. Um, but now I have so many, there's no way to name them. Yeah. That yeah. would be a full time gig. Yeah. I, um, some of my aquarium stuff is on my personal Instagram if you want to see it. Yeah. Yeah. I definitely want to check some of that out. I'm like, let me give you 48 different Instagram <laughs> accounts to look at. <laughs> it's Ashley Seeks Adventure. Is it EY? EY, yeah. That's me. Nice. Oh, God help you for seeing any of this stuff that's my personal life. So that's the plant <laughs> that I was telling you that grows so fast. Click on that third picture there. See that kind of brighter one in the middle, that brighter leaf? Uh -huh. That's a baby guppy sitting on it. Those two black dots are its eyes. That's how tiny they are. Because that leaf is only about that big. What? Isn't that crazy? That is crazy. I was taking a video because those little black dots are gnats that just because there's fish food in the water, they'll get on there. Yeah. And so I was taking a video. And at the end of the video, I went to pull the camera away. And there were these two black eyes looking at me. And I was like, what the fuck is that? Oh, my God. <laughs> what is in the water? You know? Um and it was two little guppy eyes, and then that's how I found out that they were even having the babies. Like, they're so small, they're translucent, you can't see them. And Jeez. so I was like, oh my gosh, that's awesome. Yeah, that's pretty crazy. Yeah, there's Russo messing with the aquarium. <laughs> little brat. <laughs> that's what I had pictured, like, yeah. all the time. <laughs> no, and he's only done that twice. I'm just shocked. That's wasabi in the back, the blue one, the bigger blue one. That's the betta. And then the rest of them are guppies. Those are all male guppies. The male guppies are pretty. Apparently, female guppies are not pretty. You see that pretty often. Yeah. In, in nature, most males are the pretty ones. You yeah, know? a lot of birds. And then that other picture up there, those are all snails. Like, they populate really quickly. Jesus. Those are all, and that big one on the side was the original one that I got. And that type of snail reproduces asexually. So she's created all of these like 400 snails on her own. Oh my God. Without a male. Yeah. Like, what a burden to bear. Jesus. <laughs> and snails will never be yeah, endangered. Those are shrimp. Oh, tiny little shrimp. Yep. Yeah. It's great because I just, I love tiny things. This is like <laughs> nothing could make me happier than an aquarium, apparently, because everything is tiny. Those are tiny, tiny babies. Shrimp. That might be it. The rest of that's just selfies and boring little travel stuff. There's Andy. Little baby. No. <laughs> that's the majority of that's 95 percent of her day is just like that and she wraps herself up like that she knows how to maneuver that blanket <laughs> she's got it figured out yeah oh yeah buster does that he he burrows yeah she'll go like 15 circles before she'll lie down and just touch the blanket every time she goes around <laughs> until it's perfect so ridiculous yeah and then that big snail, that's a video of a snail eating a piece of, I think it's zucchini. The snails, honestly, you'd think the fish would be interesting, but the snails are so funny to watch. They are definitely the most interesting. And he'll just, that one's pretty slow. The rest of them are pretty big, but he just maneuvers around and eats all day. That's all he does. Crazy. His name's Miso. <laughs> <laughs> he was part of the original Vento box. Nice. <laughs> Yeah, I'm just, I guess I'm just a crazy plant animal lady, come to find out. There's worse things to be. It's true. I don't have any regrets. I kind of love all my pets, so. <laughs> I like uh, your dog's hoodie right there. Yeah, her by Felicia. Yeah. Yeah, she's sassy. <laughs> yeah, that's great. <laughs> She yeah. has all kinds of sweaters. I try to refrain from putting her in one all the time because she would be in clothes all the time if I had anything to do with it. Does she not like them? Or she, not she doesn't mind it. I just feel like, I mean, it's probably not hot enough to have her in a sweater, but I want to see her in a sweater. So, you know. Yeah. But no, she doesn't care. She just hangs out. She doesn't care about anything. I can throw her on her back and she'll just lay there until I move her again. You know, she just does not care. <laughs> she's doing the same thing, too. 
Yeah. <laughs> That's with my bed pillow. I put it on the couch to hang out and watch TV, and she just took over it. Too great. So cute. She's pretty great. Well, um, when uh, you guys got anything else um, exhibit-wise coming up for your jewelry? Yeah, um, M2 is about to have their one-year anniversary, so they're going to have, I think, a pretty big blowout, and I don't know that there's a theme to it or anything, but yeah, they've got that coming up. I believe that's in, I think that's in March, so it's coming up pretty quick. I'll have to look at the date on that, but I think that'll be a pretty big show. The self-portrait show this last week was, there was a great turnout for it, and there were some really great pieces there. Um, I wish I could buy any of the art I wanted to because it would be full of their stuff. They've got some really great artists. Yeah, they usually do one. I know they do, um, is it called First Friday maybe in Soma? But they have it once a month where they all the businesses get together and so they're open for that um, every month. And they usually do, I think, a show every month. If not, it's every other month. But I think it's mostly every month. Nice. Yeah. How often uh, you get your stuff in there? Is it all? I mean, it stays you've got in stuff there always. Yeah. In there, right. Yeah, and I'll just change it out. Like if if there's a show that I need to change it out, if it does have a theme or if it's just been long enough, I'll mm-hmm. go up there and change it out. Yeah. But um, for the past year or so, I've had something in there the whole time. That may not always be the case, just because you know they have different artists that fluctuate in and out. But um, sure. but yeah, they've had other jewelry designers in there as well, um, here and there. I think right now I'm the only one, but I know Brandy um, from Bella Vita had some stuff in there for a little bit and a couple of other jewelry artists, but right now just me. Nice. Yeah. Well, um, yeah, let people know where they can find it, how they can get a hold of you if they want to get something made. Yeah, it's uh, Gypsy Heart Goods. You can find that on Facebook or on Instagram, Um, and if you're interested in something custom that you're just not seeing on there or seeing in the gallery, you can always just inbox me. I do a lot of custom orders. I mean, that's just something that, you know, we'll have a conversation and kind of just figure out what you're wanting. And I'm always happy to do that. I love a custom order. But, yeah, just Facebook and Instagram. And uh, you can always stop in M2. And I work at Carter Miller Hillcrest, and I usually have a few pieces displayed um, downstairs in the spa down there as well. Nice. Yeah. I'm thinking I may be putting some pieces in DVP downtown, so as soon as that happens, I'll, it'll be on social media. Yeah. Yeah. And go get your hair did. Oh, your eyelashes yeah. longered. Get your hair and your lashes. Get everything longer and colored and cut and all those good things. Fancy. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Right on. Well, yeah, thanks again for coming. Yeah, thanks for having me. It's been fun. Yeah. I talk a lot, so I guess this is a good thing. (laughs) (laughs) That always helps, for sure. Uh, Yeah. Go get your cool jewelry from uh, Ashley here. Get her to make you something rad. Yeah. And uh, get your hair dead. (laughs) See you guys next time.